before Crazy Ken was a tech show, it was a gaming show, and this was <laughs> actually a prop used in the first episode. Oh, I'm 11 megs short. Okay. Oh my gosh, these are just all great. Oh, f that was that was bullshit. That was bullshit right there. That was pure grade A bullshit. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because we're back with the Macintosh TV. If you have not seen the first episode with this beautiful black computer in it, I highly recommend you check it out. Today, I'm doing a follow-up to test out more of the TV functionality of said computer. In fact, many of you have also given me some great suggestions, so many that I may have to do another follow-up. Now, you may recognize this guy. If you recognize that device, you're one of the OGs because that was the first product used in Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures. That goes way back. We're gonna be using that today with the Mac TV, test it out, and I got myself one of those little plug and play joysticks. I actually used to have one, but I gave it away, and I looked them up on Amazon, they're like over $200 new, like what the heck? So I got a slightly used one on eBay for 30. We are gonna have a lot of fun, so let's boot this boy up. And it's probably not turned on. Should probably do that first. You know, it's probably not even plugged in. Son of a bitch. Let's try that again. That was my mistake. I do apologize. There we go. There's our buzz. That means it's working. And we'll boot her up. And here we go, booting up. Welcome to Macintosh. I believe this is running System 7.1. I would like to upgrade it to 7.6. Oh shit, that was staticky. <laughs> I do have a, a CD for Mac OS 7.6. It's for the Performa, but I would imagine that the Essential System software would still work on this computer. So yeah, I'll find a way to get 7.6 on here because 7.1 is good, but it's not quite as advanced. I mean, you can't even have submenus in the Apple menu. So, or subfolders, I should say. Subfolders and submenus. So yeah, we'll get her upgraded. Okay, so yeah, let's just verify that. Yes, sir. Macintosh system software 7.1 with 8 megabytes of RAM. So, 8 meg should be enough for anybody, right? I do have some other files I want to install on here and uh, some programs. I have Photoshop 0.63, a very old version of Photoshop. I have the original version of Premiere, like I talked about earlier, so editing video on this thing might be fun. And I just have some more picture files and stuff we can experiment with, so those can uh, go on there. Let's test the TV capabilities first. So, command tab lets you into the TV interface or you can use the remote, but I don't actually have the remote for this thing, so we'll just use the keyboard. Right now, we are trying to use the tuner, but I don't have anything to work with the tuner. An analog cable, I think, got phased out. However, I have been receiving some suggestions about how I can transmit certain things over RF and then get a receiver to work with that. So I might do that in the future. However, for now, I don't have that luxury, but I do have RCA jacks. Okay, so let's re-enter the interface and switch to... Oh, sh Oh, that's nice, there's me. <laughs> I honestly just put some random videos on a DVD and I didn't know where they would end up when I actually hit play, but... Oh, that's kind of cool seeing my, like, new videos on an old, beautiful Trinitron display. Oh, Macintosh Color Classic, look at that. This is pretty cool. It's a tiny little TV, but that's kind of cool. So let's see, can we, like... Okay, so yeah, that's how we change our interface from TV to video. So you can do it with the arrow keys, or you can do Command-Tab to change between the tuner and the composite, or the RCA jacks, or wh whatever they frickin' are. That's cool. Let's see what else is on here. Oops, oh, I think I forgot how to DVD. Well, there's there's Cinema of Shenanigans now on television. Oh, Standard Def Beauty. That actually kind of fits because it's based off of Mystery Science Theater, which you know, started in Standard Def over like a UHF frequency. Okay, I clearly don't know how to fast forward. Like I'm pressing the fast forward button, but it just, it's like, nope, sorry. Oh, not allowed. Okay, well, screw you too, DVD player. Yeah, maybe the batteries are just being weird. Oh, there's uh, the Lost in the Rust Belt documentary. 
All right, so we know that functionality works. Let's switch it over to a little game console and have some fun with that. Actually, um, I should test the volume on here. Okay, let's try that again. Let's start. Yep, there we go. We got some. But yeah, I used to have one of these things a while ago. I have not played many of these games, but specifically any game on this little joystick in a long time, so... This will be cool. Actually, for even more nostalgia, oh man, I didn't even think about that. Before Crazy Ken was a tech show, it was a gaming show, and this was <laughs> actually a prop used in the first episode. So we got a bunch of, like, original props being used today. This is, this is quite a time travel trip. Look at that. All right, yeah, even when we have the sound on, we can just hear that nice white noise there. All right, we'll go back to the video input. Boot her up. Hopefully there's batteries in here. There's probably not. Shit, there's not batteries in here. I am so underprepared. I just put four Energizer AA batteries in the device, which is a bit of a gamble because Energizers always leak on me. Like, seriously, like, I have cleaned up so many, like, acid buildups and shit just from Energizer batteries. This is gonna be, like, a huge flashback for me. Probably for some of you guys, too. I'm sure you guys have some classic games you like to play, right? Here we go. Miss Pac-Man Collection. Jack Pacific. Dude, this, oh my gosh, I'm already in love. Contrast, oh, this isn't even a brightness control, it's contrast, I guess. <laughs> it has a little sun on it, but the sun also has a contrast icon on it. So, okay, fair enough. Let's see, do we got sound? We should. All right, it's a little quiet. I think it's on full volume, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is. This is too cool. Oh man, this is great. Let's do this. Kind of wishing I had the faster version of Miss Pac-Man, but whatever, that seems like cheating. Get back here, Pinky. Yeah, walk right into my trap. That's it, give me those cherries. Mm -hmm. Oh f that was, that was bullshit. That was bullshit right there, that was pure Great a bullshit. Man, I have a lot of memories with just the whole Pac-Man franchise in general. Even the PlayStation games and the GameCube games and stuff. Like, so many good memories with that stuff. Yeah, that was cornered again. Yeah, I'm really not doing too well today. Yeah, 1600! Alright, let's see what else we got on here. Oh, paused. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, quit. Oh, Xevious. I love Xevious. And Galaga. Oh my gosh, these are just all great. Yeah! Gonna bomb this place. This joystick isn't like the easiest thing to hold and maneuver. I'm like squeezing it between my legs right now, which is very uncomfortable. Unlimited ammo. Those are the days. Oh yeah, the angry panels are now flying at me. Can't blow those guys up. Don't know how mankind ever engineered such a aerodynamic Tile, but they genius, I guess. Oh, you son of a bitch. Well, that's enough of that. Let's do some pole position. Prepare to qualify. All right, if I remember correctly, I pressed the other button to change gears. And I can actually, like, turn the joystick. Like, rotate it. Oh, fuck! Shit, we exploded. I, I again, I haven't played this in probably at least ten years. Hey, twenty thousand points! <laughs> Hooray! Okay, well that was fun. I'm gonna turn you off for now. So from the looks of it, we have no programs on here. So when this was given to me, uh, we basically just—it's just basically nothing. Just uh, System Seven stock. I don't see anything extra. So we will definitely put some extra things on here. For now, I have. Photoshop and some other stuff. I think Adobe Premiere on here. But first, I have some other picture files I'd like to load up into this guy, so we're gonna push this in the the little caddy loading CD-ROM drive, which I love. It's so satisfying. It's like putting in like a VHS tape. Just a nice little feeling. Rebuilding the desktop file, fantastic. Okay, so let's go to the hard disk. And let's make ourselves a folder. 
Let's call it the documents folder. Very original. Take our CD and we'll move some stuff onto the computer's disk. There's not enough room. Okay. What is this partitioned for? What is this? All right, hang on a sec. All right, 9.1 megabytes available. Oh, okay. 14 megs available? 9.5? What the shit? This is a really tiny hard drive. I think this is tiny for, well, I guess it was 1993. It's about 40 megs or so. Damn, that's tiny. That's like nothing. I wonder if there's like unused space on this disc that just isn't partitioned. Okay, uh, well, guess we'll just do this here. Let's do this. Let's go to one and then open up two. Let's just store our documents on this volume. Again, I don't know why this is all split up. This is just how it was when I got it. We can also hook up other SCSI discs if we need to. That shouldn't be too challenging. Got a premiere document, some pictures, some QuickTime movies. Oh, I'm 11 megs short, okay. Well, one of you guys is not going. I don't need this movies folder, now that I think about it. These are some older movies that I don't even think are compatible with stock QuickTime, so we can ignore that stuff. There we go. Huh, that CD-ROM drive seems really quiet. Like, I can barely hear it. All right, that's copied. Let's close this, put this disc away. Not erase, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do eject. Ding, okay. Memorex CD, in we go. Nice and cozy. And insert to the drive. Oh yes, rebuilding the desktop file. That was the thing that had to happen back then. And let's see what we have, Mac TV files. There we go, so yes, I have some pictures on here. Uh, these are just JPEGs, which uh, now that I think about it, will not work. They will need to be converted into picked files, which I could do that in Premiere, but Premiere needs to have QuickTime access to actually do stuff, and this old version of QuickTime probably doesn't support JPEG, if I had to guess. I could be wrong. Uh, in the meantime, let's just uh, copy over Premiere, and then while we're at it, we'll also install Photoshop. Let's just clean this boy up a little bit. Sort by name. Actually, even easier, sort by kind. We'll just take these useless JPEGs, do a little marquee select, and we'll... Oh yeah, I don't think there's a menu command to move to trash, is there? Drag the window out of the way and... Oh, the selection got lost. Oh, so primitive. <laughs> and then drag the items to the trash. I don't think there was another way to do it. You had to actually drag and drop. Well, that'll save a little space. Let's empty the trash now. It's just bulging over there. <laughs> All right, empty away. There we go. Could you imagine video editing on this thing? Well, we're gonna do it now if it works. Let's open up Adobe Premiere. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing just like bomb screens us or like goes, you're out of memory. We have like only eight megs on this thing. I do have that Mystic board, which has like 32 megs, I think. So if we want to do more serious video editing <laughs> on the Macintosh TV, we can throw in that board. We lose all the TV capabilities, but we would have a lot more performance. Does this have the movie player installed? I mean, it, it has, it sound, not sounds, but it seems like it has QuickTime because it's, Premiere is running and I don't think Premiere could run without QuickTime. I could be wrong. I was trying to find the extensions control panel. I guess that didn't exist in 7.1. Oh, TV setup. Oh, that's sp specific to this uh, particular model. Look at that. Well, that's nice. I don't remember ever seeing this on other Mac models in the system software. I usually always adjust the brightness with the buttons on the computer itself. Oh, hello. That can get pretty freaking bright. Yeah, I guess the, um, the extensions manager wasn't a feature until 7.5, I think. And then it got updated in 7.6, but in 7.1, I don't think there is an extensions manager. So I can't actually check from a simple interface if there is a QuickTime extension, but I could do some file system digging. Maybe use the find file command. Oh boy, let's just search movie. Not, yeah, that's good enough. Oh, that's right. It doesn't show the search results in its own separate window. <laughs> Cause we're on 7.1 and it's missing all the features I want. Well, I really need to get this thing installed. 
uh, with uh, like 7.6 or something because 7.1 is just missing so many things I would really like to use. But I'll do that in the future, so stay tuned for that. That'll be fun. See, so those are the... Okay, so here's the extensions folder. This is actually where I would like to go. We just uh, had the browser here and the file system and the finder. Hi, Sierra file access. What? I have questions. Hi, Sierra file access. Did s I wonder if someone networked this thing to work with a modern Mac to show up on a network. That's interesting because that's the name of a newer version of the Mac OS. That is, unless that's a coincidence, that is interesting. Do any of you know what that might be? I may have to hit up the Google machine. There we go. We do have QuickTime. It is installed. That is good. I just don't know if we have the actual movie player software. Let's take a look at that TV setup. I'm just curious because that's a specific control panel to this Macintosh TV. All right, channel setup, closed captions, nice. TV computer switching, oh, you can set a password, okay. TV sound in computer mode. That's kind of cool. So you can have the sound from the tuner play while you're in the desktop. Obviously you can't have the video pop up because rendering that video would be very hard for, as you can clearly see, would be very hard for this hardware, but the sound should be able to pass through no problem. That's really neat. That's really neat. I didn't know that. Let's uh, experiment with that. TV sound in computer mode from the video interface. And the hotkey by default should be command tab. Yes, it is. We got that already. Channel setup. Oh, so you can choose what channels you want to show up and which ones you don't based on, I guess, what you could get from your provider at the time. Input, antenna or cable? Oh, interesting. So you can do, hmm. I never really thought about the difference with those. I want to turn this uh, joystick back on. I want to, I wonder if the sound comes through right away. Oh my gosh, it does, that's amazing. So like, I could be watching TV, need to work on something on my Mac, switch back to the Mac interface and just continue listening. Well, that's pretty neat. So let's quit this and let's say like, oh, I wanna go play some video games with my composite thing. Like, woo, I can play Miss Pac-Man. And it's like, oh, actually I gotta get some work done. So I'm just gonna let Pac-Man die while I'm working in Adobe Premiere. <laughs> that is really cool. It just keeps going in the background. How long until she dies? Let's listen. She's still going. There she goes. That's pretty cool. Photoshop though, this is gonna be fun to experiment with. I'd like to do this in a separate video. I did an old video on this, but that was on a PowerPC computer with an LCD. This is on 68K with a Trinitron, so we're talking totally different. And I'm open to suggestions too for anything else you'd like me to try, software as well. I am very curious as to what you have to say and I'd love to try your ideas. So thanks for watching everybody. Good old caddy. Catch the crazy and pass it on.